September 13th will of course be a very good fight as it will be Rocky Hernandez versus Thomas Matisse. Now of course Hernandez is trying to work his way back up to a title shot after coming up short against the former WBC champion Oshaki Foster. And Matisse is well doing the same thing. Working his way back up and he is doing pretty well. Speaking of Matisse, his record is 22 and 3 with the one draw. 17 wins by way of knockout. He is riding a five fight win streak since his last loss back in 2021 and Luis Melendez 16 and 1 in a very close fight 77 75 in favor of Melendez. Can never go wrong with that. His other two losses was to a undefeated Will Madeira 12 and 0 and a very familiar opponent. That's right. Isak Pitbull Cruz. He lost to majority decision. But besides that, he had some good wins. I mean, obviously some controversial wins against Zora Hamazarian, 9-0, split decision. And then they rematched again. They got split decision draw. So people thought Hamazarian won. But the thing is, I can't find too much um, footage, as they would say, on him. So, you know. But he has beaten undefeated opponents. Being 13-0, Michael Dutchover, round 8 stoppage. 15-0, Christian Tapia. And 16-0, Ramiro Sensina. Now, of course, the Tapia one, also, um, people thought he should have lost that one. But Tapia was dropped, so that definitely helped the decision. But besides that, now on to Rocky. Rocky, or Eduardo Hernandez. Eduardo Rocky Hernandez is 35-2 with 13. 32 wins by way of knockout and unfortunately two losses by way of knockout oh well but a very interesting thing is of course the times he went decision only three times right when was that that was in his first six fights that's right the last time he went the full decision of course the Oshaki Foster fight went 12 rounds so obviously he went close right but it was back in 2014 against the 0-2 Felipe. Now, of course, after that, he, for some reason, there's this one, just co question mark. I guess no one really got footage of that. I guess people forgot. But, and of course, after that, he quite literally never went the second half, even in his first loss against Roger Gutierrez, who he himself is a good fighter. He has won against good people. So, 21-3, and three, obviously now has six losses, but who cares? He fought against good people, a good loss. But it was the first round, so maybe not that good of a loss. The next time he were to go the second half was against Oshaki Foster. Nearly nine years ago was the last time he ever went above, you know, after the second half. Now, of course, the next fight was also the second half against Daniel Lugo, which yeah, that's a very interesting one. We'll, we'll talk about it real quick. First of all, someone had it 60-54, which is utter garbage. But that fight was weird because Hernandez was getting touched up a lot. You may be thinking, oh, he's just trying to get back into the groove of how he was, obviously, being so close to a title, especially being damn near 20 seconds since, 20 seconds from the closing bell, which he was above on all the scorecards, except one. He would have won the belt. Okay, actually, it would have been a draw. But, you know, it does something to someone, right? A little bit. Not for Hernandez. He is a quite bit of a hard-headed fellow, but... For some reason, they try to make him become a boxer against Lugo. For some reason, I don't know why. He literally, he was getting touched up. He couldn't really do anything. He couldn't work really much of anything. Until randomly, just within a round, they decided, hey, man, you know, obviously, we're kind of dumb for trying to make you a boxer. You know, so just go out there and do your normal thing. And then Lugo couldn't win the damn round. He got stopped in the seventh round. But this will be a very good fight as Hernandez, obviously, He's a non-stop puncher. This man will punch you, punch you, punch you, punch you. And you will most likely not be able to stop him. Unless you go to the body, obviously. But for someone that's defensive and Foster, damn, he was getting touched up there too. Not as much as, you know, the other guys, obviously. But definitely a lot. But besides the Foster fight and the Lugo fight, he has fought some quite a bit of good opponents himself. Back-to-back -back against Jorge's. I guess two-for-one special there. 15-1 and one and 15-0 and, oh and two. And then some other winning records for the most part. Very nice. 12-1 and one, uh, Hugo Alfredo Santillan. But besides that, who do I got winning? Now, this is a very interesting one because there's not a lot of footage of Matisse. So, you know, it's kind of hard to really be like, hmm, what kind of boxer is he? Well, 
if there's one way to des describe him, he's a bad defensive fighter, if that makes any sense. Because the Isak fight, or the Pitbull fight, I saw a lot more footage, and I was looking at it, and it looked like he was trying to dodge a lot of the punches. It did not work, like at all. Like, dude kept getting touched up, he couldn't work on anything, which of course could be because of Pitbull and his style. But, you know, it's very obvious in his other fights, you know, I think he's being a little too defensive for his own good. Which, don't get me wrong, against Hernandez, he definitely needs to be, you know, defensive, you know. You gotta block the, block the punches, but he has power, a lot of it. And he could hurt Hernandez if he could. I just don't think he'll be able to provide enough offense to really prove a threat to Hernandez. But you never know. He might slip counter or something like that. He could try, but Hernandez is quite literally like a buzzsaw. Once he catches you, you're done. You're done for. Like, I don't really think that there's any... Because he, he tires you out so bad. If Lugo was normal. The next round, he just was just exhausted. He was fighting off a, fighting on fumes at that point. I was like, damn. It all happened within a round. Hernandez just drains you of your energy by how much... First of all, because of how hard he punches. And also how much he punches in the first place. I like Matisse's chances, but it's not big. It's like 75-25 in favor of Hernandez. But don't get me wrong, it's still good odds. I mean, one in four fights, he's going to get the win, but like still. Most likely, most likely not going to be this fight. So it's a very interesting one, because Hernandez, I don't want to say he's defensively deficient, but he is touchable. A lot of it. It's just kind of like the saying goes, the best defense is a great offense. Kind of hard to expose his weaknesses when you got like five punches coming out your face. Very hard to do. But, besides that, Hernandez is most likely going to stop Matisse, depending on how he fights. If he fights a more defensive style, he's not going to work. He's going to break through it. He's going to get stopped in the fifth. But if Matisse provides enough offense combined with his defense, I do think it goes farther. But he still gets stopped. I don't think he's going to go. I don't think he's going to beat Hernandez. Look, I said he has a lot of power, but... Hernandez is most likely going to get into his groove before Matisse does. And you do not want Hernandez in his groove. This dude would literally zap you of your energy within one round. It's like he got energy draining gloves or something. This dude, I don't know, he's just like that. But besides that, the winner will most likely not get a title shot. Especially Hernandez because he already lost it. But I would not mind seeing Hernandez versus Nunez. You know, the guy that has a essentially 100% knockout ratio. He did lose, but technically 100%. I would love to see that fight. Obviously, because, I don't know. I don't know if Eddie Hearn really wants to put up his Kakesi Warrington winner against Nunez or Hernandez. You know, he'd much rather keep the champions in the house. What's up, Kakesi? I think Kakesi's Queensberry. But, I would not mind seeing any of them against someone like Lamont Roach. But besides that, I got Hernandez winning... You know, let's go in the middle. Seventh round stoppage against Matisse. It's going to be a great fight for as long as it lasts. But unfortunately, Matisse, it, he just, he's 34 now. He's definitely older. Definitely not old enough to be like, oh, no, I'm too old. I got hip problems now. You don't got that. But he just won't be able to keep up with Hernandez. Hernandez is just, you have to hurt him before he gets in his groove. Because yeah, he's just over. But anyways, enough dilly-dallying. Hope you enjoy this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Scoring shot. With welterweights, they sometimes bring you the best of both worlds. Fast hands and power. The middleweights are the best. So much for defensive abilities. Oh! Joe Calzaghi just went down.